Friday. Some people will tell you thank God is Friday, but for some of us, every day is thank God. In fact, every minute is thank God. Well, what is Friday? For some people, it's time for them to actually text talk and at the end of the day, go and relax for the next two days. But of course, if you are, if your job is like is like that of some of us here in the studio, you know that you have to walk around the clock. You know, uh, even the clock, it's even it's like you are not the one keeping tab of the clock, but the, the clock actually keeping tab of your activities. But then, what can we do? We must say thank you. However busy you think you are, there are other people who are actually begging to have that opportunity to be that busy without even being paid a dime. I used to say, I mean, somebody will complain, I don't have money and I'm trekking kilometers. But somebody is there on the hospital bed telling God that if you can give me my leg, I'm going to trek kilometers. If you can give me the health, I don't mind trekking hundreds of kilometers as part of appreciation. But you don't have the health, why should you complain that you don't have the money to even, uh, at, I mean, you are complaining of trekking. By the way, trekking is an exercise. Well, it's Friday, and it's Friday edition of the program. The name remains Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kader. Program coming to you from the stables of Liberty Television, Voice for All, and Vision for All. And today we are reaching you from our Kaduna studios. Well, so many issues. The Senate President and the Chairman of his former party talking about the uh, All Progressive Congress, Adam Sushomali. A lot of exchange there between the two people. Well, let's see what happens at the end of the day. As it is today, it seems that the exchange between Adam Sushomali and Rocha Sokorocha and uh, Ibikule Amusu is taking the back seat. At least since Adam Sushomali came back from wherever he went to. But Adam Sushomali granted an interview talking about so much uh, what transpired what how to be and what a view. But yesterday there was a headline which uh, we, uh, Shemole was saying, well, Amusu and Okorosha are loyal party members and they will do what the party wants them to do. Well, at the end of the day, let's see how that uh, pans out. When I say pans out, well, that's a broadcast language. Let's see how it plays out at the end of the day. Talking about political parties, so many issues in the polity, but let that be today. Why is it when we talk about political parties, we're always talking about all progressive Congress, People's Democratic Party, and of reason, Social Democratic Party. Never mind that uh, Abiola must have gone with his Social Democratic Party. But the party is still there. And uh, a lot of people, some people are battling to see that it remains. Today we have 91 registered political parties. And I'm sure, even if I'm going to give you one million naira and I said name 10 for me, it might be difficult for you to name 10 of those political parties. The other day we were talking and we saw um, Butin Party of Nigeria, BPN. Somebody was like, Butin Party? I said, well, there might be Butin against 2023, you know, <laughs> when it becomes functional. So today we shall be looking at uh, alternatives to the bigger political parties. Parties. You know, when you say bigger political parties, the name that comes to mind are PDP, APC, and like I said of recent, maybe SDP. Even ABGA uh, is taking the back seat as it is. So this morning, we have a national chairman of one of the recently registered political parties, and wait for it, Youth Party. Yes, YP. That is the name of that party. I mean, we have 91. Remove uh, even five. You know what you have left. You have about 86. I mean, why are we not looking at those 86 or more of it? But then, uh, let me not let the cart out of the bag or put the horse before the cart. This morning, we have with us Suleiman Usman. And uh, for Suleiman Usman, Suleiman has been several things. But let me start from somewhere which uh, the public might not know. Suleiman had worked in the Office of National Security Advisor. Of course, not the current one, the former. Uh, Suleiman was the brain behind the establishment uh, of... Uh, Yes, mean Erufai Foundation. I'm sure you know that foundation, which is not political. You remember at a point, the wife of the governor had to come out and issue a statement. We have nothing to do with politics. We don't want to be associated with politics and what a view. A foundation that has to remember one of those wonderful girls who lost her life at a very uh, early stage, talking about Yes, mean Suleiman was just until uh, a month or two back, when Suleiman resigned, he was the brain behind that. So Suleiman is the national chairman of EU party. I don't know how youthful he is. Levan, good morning. Good morning. Actually. It's good to have you here. Thank you for having me. Well, let's start from that name, Youth Party. I mean, why the name Youth Party? Um, okay. Well, the Youth Party, mm. uh, like you know, the Nigerian constitution 
does not allow for uh, uh, restrictiveness in terms of uh, political parties. Okay. The party should be open for to all Nigerians to be able to uh, join and uh, achieve whatever they want to achieve. Mm. But in the case of Youth Party, uh, Youth Party is a name that symbolizes energy. Okay. okay. It's a name that symbolizes ideas, fresh ideas, mm. to move the country forward. What we are trying to say by Youth Party is that we are saying that, look, uh, the, over the years, there are several negative uh, uh, things, you know, being directed to the youths, that the youths, people are saying they are not uh, living to expectation, they are not doing what they are supposed to do to move the country forward, mm. to the extent that the present president, you know, somewhere, uh, you know, outside the country, made certain comments. Allegedly. Yes. <laughs> Which that, he said he never did. Yes. That triggered so many reactions. Mm -hmm. So what we are trying to do this time is to tell people that, look, although you might see some youths not living up to expectations, but this time around, this party is founded by the youths, and it is being run by the youths. Okay. And that goes a long way to say that, look, while some other youths are not really living up to expectation, but some others are doing some wonderful, wonderful things to move the country forward. Does that mean you can't have uh, people who are not youth as registered members of the party? Yes, of course. The party is open for all. Uh, Even though uh, one of the key ideologies of the party mm. is to train and groom future leaders. Okay, okay, yes. okay. Okay, we, we've had issues. You know, just this current dispensation run up or running up, I would say, to the 2019 elections, we see parties like the People's Democratic Party, the All Progressive Congress, I mean, those that they call the big parties. How people will say, well, these are parties that don't give the youth uh, the opportunity to actually uh, fulfill their aspiration. We saw the signing of the bill, uh, which becomes a law, not, I mean, too, not too young to run. Uh, that people were saying, well, we should be having a uh, too old to run too, <laughs> uh, in the polity. Yes. But why do you think we keep talking about these two or three major political parties? Yes. See, it has to do with the way the country has been run for a very long time. What I'm trying to see is that, um, you, you know, these parties, because of uh, the opportunity they had at the beginning when Nigeria returned to democracy in, 20, uh, in 1999, you know, uh, they took that advantage because some of them were the early, you know, parties that came on board. Now, but for me, when you say big parties, I will look at it in two ways. Okay. Yes, on one way, I see a party that uh, has people occupying political offices. Office. Okay. I see a party that is very popular. You know, when you talk about political parties, people will mention those parties. Now, on the other hand, I see, can we say they are big parties? when you have issues with, uh, you know, adhering to the principles of internal democracy. democracy. Okay. Are we going to see that the part, these parties are big when they keep on growing, individuals that are manning these parties are growing or individuals are contesting under the platform are growing while the, uh, you know, the people they are ruling <laughs> are, are becoming smaller and smaller in terms of so many other things. So for me, if we want to talk about uh, a party, if we want to see a party is big, we have to look at, look at so many issues. How far have you gone in manning yourself? What happens to the principles of internal democracy? Only recently, we've had several conflicts going on among the so-called big parties. They can't, they couldn't even, uh, you know, adhere to primary elections to the principles of uh, internal democracy. You have people fighting here and there. You have endorsements here and there which contradicts the principle of democracy. So for me, if when you look at the structure, you discover that, look, this party are not really big in terms of structure. Some have good structures, but the, in terms of implementation, uh, is zero. So you, you don't, uh, you have to be strong internally to be able to show people that you are strong and you are big outside. But, but, but then again, we see, because I, I, I talked about this a lot, when uh, 
We look at First Republic. When we talk about the Sadonas, the Tafabalewas, the Aminu Kanus, uh, the Sunday Awanis, the Awalawas, the Ziggs, and what have you. I mean, those were people who got to leadership positions, barely out of their 30s. Some of them were actually in their 20s when they got to this position and were grew into that position. Uh, of course, those who took over from that first set of uh, leaders were something else. Some of them are still on the stage as we speak to this, as we speak today. But you ask yourself, if those who lay the foundation, founding fathers of Nigeria, got to the position at that tender age, but today somebody will wake up and tell you that, look, the youth are not ready, will it be the right statement to make? Uh, well, when you say the youth are not ready, mm. I think it's a very wrong statement. Mm. It's like you are telling a nation that it has no future. If the youths are not ready, then what have you done? To prepare the to youth. prepare the youths. Okay. So it means you are telling us you are a failure. You tell me the youths are not ready, then I'll look at you and say you are a failure. You are a failure because you you refuse to prepare the, the, the youths. Now again, when you look uh, at private sectors, you discovered a lot of youths mm. doing wonderful things to you know achieve personal progress and of course in general national progress. So if the youths can do it in private sectors, then when you bring them to government sectors or, uh, or governance, it means they will do it. So it's just the opportunity that should be given, and you see wonderful things. The leaders of today, most of them started with, uh, without experience, but you know, being given the opportunity, along the line they learn, and they are doing very well, some of them. So what are we saying? If you don't give these youths uh, the opportunity, it means they won't grow. They will keep on remaining where they are, and that is very dangerous for a country that has close to 200 million people. Th that brings us to, I mean, we saw what happened pre-2015. A lot of new political parties were registered. Uh, but along the line, even before, not even be, not even uh, pre-2015, before that, we saw a lot of new political parties registered. But at a point, INEC had to deregister some of those parties. I remember some parties like the PRP had to go to court for, for it to actually to be re-registered again by INEC. Here we are today having 91 political parties. Now, do we actually need 91 political parties as it is? Yes, uh, before I talk on that, mm. I will tell you that uh, my recent research revealed that in America, where we borrowed our democracy from, is having over 400 political parties. Okay. The beauty of democracy is to give every individual the opportunity to participate equally. So having 91 or even more political parties, for me, I think, is healthy for democracy. It depends on how these parties play. Now, coming back to, uh, to the question whether the, uh, can you? Yeah, do we actually need no 91 political parties at this time? Yes, like I said, it's healthy for the It's country. healthy for, for, for Yes, people for. should be given opportunities. When you go to the United States, you, mm. you have a party that, uh, that, 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 that is coming out, that, that registered as a party just because of, uh, you know, uh, for instance, lesbianism. Okay. They want to protect their rights as le uh, lesbians, mm -hmm. and they register a political party. Which, of course, we know we don't condone in our own environment. We don't, uh, of course. I'm mm -hmm. just citing an, that example. As an example. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So as small as that, people join political parties. So in our own case, people should be given opportunities. When you have the few parties, for instance, then, mm -hmm. you know, are uh, highly restrictive, there is no opportunity for new people to come in. Mm. And even if they come in, there is no opportunity for them to participate equally. Mm. Then it's a big problem. Now, the way out, if you don't believe in uh, the ideologies of the existing parties, mm. you go ahead to register your party. It's how you play that matters. But, but, but then, like other clients we talk about, other places where you have uh, what you call county, uh, in this place, do you think if our local governments are allowed to function, if our local governments are autonomous, if our local governments are not actually in the pocket of our governors, as we are seeing today, 
do you think that will be a very good I mean, point where some of these uh, smaller political parties in, in, in court will have actually made impact and actually show the world that we can actually do better than the, than the so-called big political parties? Exactly. I think once uh, the local governments have autonomy, mm -hmm. you are creating a solution to the problem. Because we have these parties that don't even have resources to participate in national elections effectively and efficiently. Mm -hmm. Now, when you have autonomy of local governments, mm -hmm. it means these parties can now go back to different local governments and file candidates. From councillorships. Exactly, and their Chairman. little resources would afford them to you know, acquire positions at local government and probably state level. So, but when you make it, uh, when the local governments are not uh, autonomous, mm. they are being held by, you know, the power in the, the state, then it's a big problem. It means other parties cannot participate equally, and it's very dangerous for democracy. All right. Uh, when we come back, we'll take a quick break. When we come back, we'll be looking at 91 political parties registered before. Is it actually for 2019 election, 2023 election? Or we are thinking of, uh, I mean, maybe probably more decades ahead to come. Uh, when we come back from that break, we go to the issues and eventually open the lines for you to be part of the program. Remain with us. Danny Sucre, and there's an essence to staying glued to your TV because Liberty TV offers much more than you have ever seen. Are you looking for the latest updates on news, entertainment, education, information, enlightenment, business, and lots more? Just name it because Liberty TV got it. Liberty TV is strategically broadcasting from Kaduna State to a global audience founded on the tenets of free speech, human and civil rights. You can catch us live on Star Times Decoder Channel 180 or Strong HD, better still, Multi TV. For online views and information, feel free to check out the website. It's www.libertytvradio.com. It's more fun in Liberty. Liberty TV, voice for all, vision for all. The Europa League is now live and exclusive in HD on Star Times. Watch Arsenal. Chelsea. AC Milan. Sevilla, Olympic Marseille, and other top clubs in Europe battle for glory in the Europa League. Enjoy all these and over 75 exciting channels for just 1,900 Naira on the Star Times Classic Bouquet. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. I'm a teacher, my gimme to Raru, ya saki sabo zivi. I'm makuma dan enumi, dead in the English, she passed a chance aba. The magi, go watch a match to Raru wachi. Thank you for being there. The program is Dialogue. If you're just joining us, we are looking at those political parties that were alternatives to the big political parties. Today when we talk, we talk about the PDP, APC, SDP, APGA, uh, Labour Party even. Uh, so far, I think Labour Party produced only one uh, <laughs> gubernatorial, uh, one governor actually, Mimiko of uh, 
on those states. Who incidentally we also met to understand just uh, this morning I was reading uh, has done away with his aspiration to run for the presidency. Uh, we've seen Abgar that has produced two, three governors or four thereabouts, other political parties. But we have, as our guest this morning, the chairman of uh, a youth party, yes, YP, youth party, talking about Suleiman uh, Usman. And like I just said, uh, if you're just joining us, sorry, uh, Suleiman before now worked on the, uh, in the office of the National Security Advisor. Uh, before then, after then, he came, established the Yasmin Arafai Foundation. Uh, you remember that you know that foundation that is doing so much for women and youth out there uh, in terms of uh, literacy. Uh, just barely a few months, two months uh, thereabouts, Lehman resigned and he is the cha national chairman of the youth party. And we looked at why. 91 political parties, what are the advantages, why do people keep running to the so-called established political parties and other issues? Well, someone again, of course, are we having these political parties just because of 2019 election? Well, I ask that question because you have some youth now who will tell you, okay, this is a platform for you to actually uh, achieve your aspiration. But they would rather go to somewhere where at the end of the day, we hear complaints of imposition of candidate. I actually won election, I was denied of it. I mean, so many excuses. So these new political parties, are we talking of now or are we talking of the future? Yes, I think uh, I wouldn't speak for all the political parties. Mm -hmm. But rather, I will speak for the youth party okay. where I belong. The youth party, uh, it's not only about 2019. Okay. The Youth Party, you know, like we say, uh, our slogan is shape the future. Okay. So we are looking at the future. We are looking beyond 2019, 2023, 2027, and so on. We want to have a party that will give opportunities for every Nigeria to join and uh, you know, get to his aspiration. Okay. Now, uh, one of the things we believe in, we believe in providing equal for opportunity in terms of uh, some basic social uh, uh, engagements. We want to see how we can give uh, opportunity, equal opportunity in terms of social housing, in terms of basic education, and in terms of uh, 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 universal health. No, but, but, but again, looking at it, why do you think we have a, among some of these new political parties, parties that charge almost nothing for people to actually obtain their forms, achieve their aspiration? But why do you think, especially among the youth, are not actually taking advantage of it, but would rather run to PDP or APC and at the end of the day come back complaining again? that have been disenfranchised. You no, know, I won the election, but somebody else was given the mandate. Uh, there was imposition of candidates, and what have you? Yes, I think most people complain of several problems mm. within those parties. But for me, I feel it's what they want. Because you are complaining of problems, and you are still chasing the problem. When you have other options, having 91 political parties, parties in Nigeria should give people opportunity to go through manifestos, to go through constitutions of those parties, and uh, you know, identify with uh, one that suits their personal ideologies, and that will give them the opportunity to uh, to grow. Now, people are complaining of APC and PDP that uh, you know, for you to contest yeah. under the platform of APC, you need to you pay have to through pay your nose about fifty something million. Mm. That other parties are saying, come, like you party, we said for nomination form for 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 anybody aspiring for president is two million. Okay, for governorship is one million, and again for Senate, eight hundred thousand. State Assembly is, is, is 200,000, House of Reps is 400,000. But the issue is I was so short when we realized that after putting out information out for more than a week, nobody came for, for the form. That is to tell you that people are complaining, but they are uh, part of the problem. Why should you not look outside? Why should you still stick to these political parties? And the simple truth is a lot of people are looking at these uh, so-called big political parties yeah. because they are looking at a party that will impose them on people. 
but, but, but why do you think even despite all those obstacles some of this especially young politicians talk about they still prefer to stay with such big political parties yes it's because you know over the time somebody will just point at you and say you will become and you will you become okay somebody will point at you and say oh you are a contestant you are going to contest under our platform you are going to represent this particular uh, you know space and it happens. So doesn't, people, that, doesn't, doesn't that contradict the tenet of free will and democracy? Yes, it's because people don't want to go and do the heavy lifting. Okay. Politics is local. When you say heavy lifting, what do you mean by that? Good. Politics is local. You go and meet the people who will eventually vote you into or vote you out or vote you into an office. But people like the easy way. People like not to work and to have plenty of successes, which okay. doesn't work anywhere. Now, they rather go for parties that are already popular. They would rather go for parties that will impose them on people. Because what happened in the recent primary elections was exactly, you know, somebody sitting saying, no, there is no going to be primary elections. You will contest for us. So this is what a lot of people want. That is to tell you the mindset of so many individuals. But for us, we believe in working hard. We believe in, we understand that you don't have certain success until you work for it. And that is why since 2014, we work hard towards the establishment of a youth party. And, you know, to shock you, we spent two years okay. in the court with INEC. Oh, before you get registered? Yes, before we got registered. Wow. How we come? Why, why, why the legal battle with INEC? Yes, that the party, the name is too, is restrictive. Okay, okay. And from the back door, some of some other people told us that, look, the name is revolutionary. Okay. So, <laughs> and that was why we had to spend two years. At the end of the day, it was court order that got us registered. Even when I was receiving certificates, I think uh, one of the INEC officials told me that, look, you know it's court order that registered you. And this is the problem. For the first time, the youth are coming you know, with wonderful ideas, they are coming to say, look, this is our future, and we have to work for it. Well, if you will say that, by the way, they said the court is the last hope of the common man. So, <laughs> Yes, I, I think I saw that, I, I believe that, because we took through court and we finally succeeded. You don't have to look at the name of a party and tag it. You have to look at the documents submitted to you. You have to look at our manifestos, you have to look at our constitution. Is there anything that is restrictive? In the UK, we have youth party. Okay. Then why are you saying in Nigeria you don't have youth you party? Can't have a youth in Nigeria, we have Labour Party. Mm -hmm. The people that founded the Labour Party are not all members. Of they are not, uh, uh, the people that founded it, of course, members of Labour Union. Mm -hmm. But the people, you know, that are the members of that party, mm -hmm. some of them are not really from uh, Labour Unions. So that's to tell you that you can establish a party that is open to everybody regardless of you. Oh, I would have loved to ask about funding, but I know that is going to take us uh, somewhere mm. else. But at this point, let's open the lines for you, the viewer, to be part of the program. Uh, the numbers will be displayed on your TV screen. But for the sake of those who might be listening to us uh, without seeing, uh, let me call out the numbers for you. Uh, the numbers to call to be part of the program are 0803 I take that again, 0803-095-6375. That's the first number. And the second number is 0806 891-8315. Uh, call in and let's get your opinion, get, get your contribution to the program. We are discussing uh, alternatives to the bigger political parties, bigger in inverted comma, and uh, what do you think uh, sh we should be doing? We have our first caller here. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Well, that's the problem. Please, when you call in, the moment you are connected, turn down the volume of your TV set so that we can have effective uh, communication. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Your name and where you're calling from? I'm calling from Brian Kebe. 
Burning Kirby. Hello? Who, who is calling from Burning Kirby? Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Your name? Hello. Your name? Good morning. Good morning. My name is Akelvin from Burning Kirby. All right, go ahead. Yes. Atayru. Atayru, go ahead. We can hear you. So, my, 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 my comment is about this political parties. Okay. Hello? Go ahead, we are with you, Atayru. What, 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 what you are saying by this, I think this political party, they are only wasting resources of the country. How? Because uh, by the time they say they have 90 political parties, even, even the, the, the means they are going to produce for the ballot paper and other districts and logistics for the, for the election. Mm -hmm. So it will cost, it will cost uh, a lot. The INEC. And also to, 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 to even to the, uh, the, the results. It is one that the, a lot of time before the results will be compiled because of the long uh, political parties that we have in the ballot paper. Before we're even talking out the, the results, it will take much time. All right, all right, uh, Atahiru there from yeah. Burning Kirby. Uh, okay, we have another caller. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Okay. Yeah, it's a solo program. Uh, yeah, Abdullah, where are you calling from? I'm calling from... I, we didn't hear that. I'm calling from Kaduna. Okay, Abdullah, Bello, go ahead. Yeah, um, my question is to Malawi this month. Okay. Um, I have always been an advocate of youth party. Yes. Um, Abdullahi Bello there. Abdullahi wants to know what is Youth Party doing uh, with regards to uh, political education, political enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> yes, um, when we started, we realized that, look, we we have to do a lot. Okay. People let, are, let, let's, okay, the call has dropped. Go ahead. Okay. People are not educated politically. People don't understand their rights. And that is why, is one of the reasons why you find people talking about having a lot of parties. People don't understand that, look, this is democracy, that uh, democracy is that everyone should be given the opportunity to do whatever he wishes, so long as within the, uh, uh, you know, the laws. Now, talking about uh, uh, political education, already the Youth Party, when we started, um, I, I want to tell you that uh, uh, recently you understand that we are the third in terms of social media. And okay. when you go to our social media handles, mm -hmm. you realize that what we do is about educating people, people. regarding the economy of the state, regarding uh, you know their votes, how to vote, and regarding their rights. Okay, let's general. take this caller. Hello, good morning. Uh, good morning. Uh, Fine, thank you. Your name and where you're calling from? Zamfara. All right, and the name is? We are with you. Your name? Yes, go ahead. Tell us your name and go ahead with your contribution. My contribution? Yes. My name is Red Okay, Mal Mohamed. Thank you for joining us. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hello, Mohamed. Uh oh, Mohamed dropped there. Oh, all right. Um, well, please, when you call in, uh, keep the volume of your TV set low so that we can hear you. If you try to listen to yourself, where the TV set there with you, uh, we, we, we can't have effective communication. Listen to yourself via whatever facility you are using to call us. That way we can have effective communication. We have another caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Your name and where you're calling from? All right, go ahead. Uh, I want to talk um, about the addition of the political party. Okay. Hello? Go ahead, we are with you. 
Thank you uh, very much. That, uh, okay. Well, but now when we talk, when we talk about because sometimes when we talk about this, people will say some youth are not actually coming out to run for a position because they actually want that position. Uh, some of them are just coming out to run because at the end of the day, uh, the, the, the people, the people, the bigger people, they will say, okay, come and be my essay or come and be this and what have you. Mm. I mean, why should we be having that at this particular time? Yes, and that is the that is a major problem. People settle for less. Okay, settling for less. Yes. Okay. People settle for less. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day. Hello, good morning. Sorry, let's take this caller. Hello? Yeah, good morning. Your name and where you're calling from, quickly. Hello? Hello, we can hear you. Hello? It seems not hearing us. Hello, good morning. Hello? Yeah, thank you for joining us. Your name and where you're calling from. Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Yeah. All right, go ahead. Hello? Uh-oh, he dropped. Another caller on the line. Hello, good morning. Hello? Hello, good morning. Yeah, thank you for joining us. Your name and where you're calling from? Hello, good morning. Good morning. We can hear you loud and clear. Hello, my name is Musa. I'm calling from the name of the name. All right, Musa, go ahead. Go go ahead, go ahead. Uh oh, he dropped there. All right, let's try this as our last caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Your name or where you're calling from? I'm calling. How's that happening? That caller also <laughs> dropped there. Yeah, but why should the youth be settling for less when you can have the best? Exactly, uh, it's because uh, of this uh, issue of. Uh, short-term thinking okay for me i joined youth party because i know at a point in my life mm. uh, if i'm alive i will be old yeah. and uh, children would ask me questions what have you done when nigeria was going bad each and every one of us should be responsible for what will happen tomorrow that means we must be part of the political process we must consciously be part of political process. And when we say be part of political process, mm -hmm. it mustn't be that everyone should come out to contest. No. There are those that know uh, who they are, mm -hmm. and they know that if given the chance, they will move the country forward. There are those that will join political parties to support it, to make it stronger, so that it will be able to deliver its uh, manifestos. So what I'm saying, in essence, is that we must make conscious efforts. We must realize that, look, tomorrow, whatever future we want to see, mm. we have to start working for that future today. No. Okay. Now, I want to talk about uh, the issue of uh, voter education voter that someone education. raised. Yeah, well, Aside some of the engagements we have in, on social media, we also have community outreach programs, okay. whereby you go to communities, you have a discussion with people, you educate them on their rights, you know, regardless of the party they will vote. Yeah. We engage people, we tell them why they should be part of this process, why their future is important, what they are seeing at the moment will not help them in the future. They should work towards having a country that will be provide equal opportunity for their children. So we also have what we call policy discourse series. Uh, in coming up with our pol with policies on education and health and so many other sectors, we now reach out to the grassroots. We sit to them, we ask questions on monthly basis, and we use some of the feedback, some of the responses 
in building our policies. Well, I think, uh, Slevan, let, let's leave it at that. I'm sure you should be paying for that to let, <laughs> to let Nigerians know exactly. about that. But before we go, I don't know uh, if you've seen uh, this on the street. Uh, if you've not seen this on the street, I'm sure uh, you do a lot. You do yourself a lot of good to actually uh, pick this out there. I mean, I, I, I find quite some stories there. Uh, from Zamfara to Burunu uh, to Obasanjo to Kaduna to uh, I think Professor Sawa there uh, speaking, you know. Uh, this is not newspaper review anyway, but I think Sokoto will turn well uh, weather the storm. That's the big question there. Uh, Zulum, Zulum is the APC candidate in Borono State. He seems to be the governor in Wenting. Uh, Zamfara, Yaris on ending trouble. In fact, when you say, uh, I, I don't know if Yaris trouble will never end. <laughs> but anyway, you can pick. Uh, most state governments are virtually stealing local government funds. That's coming from Obasanjo. These are, look, these are governors who say they cannot pay 30,000 naira. These are governors who are saying uh, fr flying private jets are not uh, affluent for the necessity. I, I just don't know. But Obasanjo is telling us. Obasanjo is in a better position to know why I dump PDP, Mohamed Sadi Bello. Well, I said it here. Mohamed Sadi Bello is a Shekarao's uh, 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 protege. So we know Mohamed Sadi Bello goes wherever uh, 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 Malam goes. So, but you can pick to know some of the. Today's Politicians are selfish, Professor Sawa. Why? Well, I don't know. I just, if you can, I mean, not that if you can, pick a copy of uh, 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 Voice of Liberty, you get some of these uh, uh, stories there. What? Suleiman Usman, the national chairman of Youth Party. Suleiman, thank you very much. Thank you for having for me. your uh, you opportunity so this morning. Yeah. All right, there you are. Thank you for investing your time with us. It's the last edition of the program for the week. It's Friday. Please, whatever you do, think Nigeria, walk Nigeria, sleep Nigeria. I mean, but above all, pray Nigeria. Abdul Aziz Ahmed Kadri saying, "Have a wonderful weekend ahead." Good morning.